All right, picture this. It's 1968. Ford just beat Ferrari at Le Mans, and they made a killing name for themselves in the motorsports category. Now in America, we have the Mustang, so if we want to go fast, we could do a little something. But in Europe, cars are small, affordable, and slow. Rallycross is a huge thing in Europe right now, and Ford has no place in it until they decide to create a new division called RS. And eventually, with their partnership in tuning and manufacturing company Cosworth, they absolutely dominate the Rallycross motorsport industry. Ford and Cosworth together went crazy making small compact cars that are crazy fast and super cool. From the RS200 to the Escort Cosworth to the Capri to the Sierra, all the way leading up to the Focus RS. Three generations of the Focus RS. And in America, couldn't have any of them. None. Which really sucked, because in America, we really did grow this crazy appetite for hot hatches, four-cylinder, all-wheel drive turbo cars that just dominate off-road, on-road, and anywhere you go with it. Super STI selling like hotcakes, the Evolution, RIP, the Golf GTI and R's are coming up to play, and even the Civic Type R's is... But the RS? Can't have it. That is until the 2015 Geneva Auto Convention, where Ford announced they're going to trade off with the Mustang GT to the UK. We Americans, for the first time, get the third generation Focus RS, and by far, the most badass hot hatch that has ever came out. And I bought one. This is my 2016 Ford Focus RS. Stealth gray RS2 package with the winter track pack. From the factory, this thing came with a 2.3 liter twin scroll turbo four cylinder motor. It has 350 horsepower, 350 foot pounds of torque pumping out through a six-speed manual gearbox, all-wheel drive. Now what really got people about this all-wheel drive system is that it has active torque vectoring. Now, what does that mean? There are two separate differentials for this car, and they're clutch-driven. Now, with the active torque vectoring system that is kind of stolen from Porsche, power can be divided between the front and the back of the car. In fact, up to 70% of the power can be sent solely to the rear which also gives us the option to have drift mode. Along with that, 50% of that power can be sent to each wheel individually. And as you turn with this car, each wheel will actually speed up individually as much as it needs to take the turn more efficiently and faster. Unlike most traditional torque vectoring systems, they actually slow down each wheel using the brakes so you can turn without losing traction. They created this car with tradition and rally sport in mind. That's why they kept up their tradition, working with Cosworth to create the heads and working with Ken Block to actually make the tune complete on this vehicle. I'm sure you can tell by the yellow badges in the front and the back of the car that I didn't keep this car stock. In fact, I went stage one with this and predominantly with mount tune, parts and tuning. The fact is that Mount Tune is an incredible company that has a long history tuning and working on Focus RS and most Ford products in Europe. When the car came over to America, they did the exact same thing and they offered incredibly engineered parts with great performance, great tuning for quality work. As she sits, the car has about 380 horsepower and 420 foot-pounds of torque. To complement their stage one tune that has been refined by them, I went with their full intake system down to the turbo, their recirculation valve and sound suppression chamber on the turbo housing, their rear motor mount for not only some extra support, but it does help put power down where it needs to be put. Two step colder spark plugs and some MSD rapid fire coils. And a exhaust valve open simulator in the rear, so the exhaust is open 110% at all times. Unfortunately, this car was not as perfect as Ford wanted it to be. In fact, it was riddled with its own problems. Besides the turning radius being absolutely horrendous, and in fact my Explorer has a better turning radius than this car does, the head gasket was recalled for being the wrong head gasket inside the car. 
You see, Ford did not take into account that Cosworth was building these heads, and they assumed they would be pretty much the same heads that they have on their Mustangs. So, they used the same gasket as they do in their Mustangs. And obviously, they didn't really work too hard, because almost every Ford Focus RS that came out of 2016 and part of 2017 started having coolant leaked into their oil. The motor mounts were also silently recalled, but Ford never announced this. In fact, they didn't even tell dealerships about this. Your mounts would actually have to go bad and your motor to drop down. And you go to a dealer and say, hey, this happened, how much is it to fix? And the dealer would say, oh, okay, we'll fix that. Nevertheless, I fucking love this car. And I'll probably spend a ridiculous amount of money throughout my lifetime to keep it running and moving better than ever before. In fact, a big part of this channel is to document my journey and to go into stage two with this thing. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show because we have a lot coming to this channel. <laughs> 